Hey guys, and welcome to another refactorizing video. I'm joined as always by Colonel Will. Hello. And today we are in a uh, really large bot-based factory created by Allors, I believe, uh, if that's how it's pronounced. But this one we decided to go over because it's a bit different. Usually the ones previously we've gone over are belt-based kind of bus type designs. Uh, this one at this point is entirely bot-based. And uh, you can see as I'm on the map, the pollution is absolutely wonderful delicious yeah it's uh mostly probably that large because uh this entire base is concreted so yeah this is this is why we would say don't um don't concrete your base we've done it in our earth map we could not earth map. version 15 one because we've turned off pollution mm -hmm. if you just show the active show active chunks on F4 menu, you see that every single one is active and eating UPS. Yep. So, uh, if pollution was off, then obviously pretty much the only things active would actually be the base itself. Um, yeah, and a few outposty dots. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, that's that's the first thing, uh, it, you know, and of course, we are still getting 60 60, but we do have to consider that the base really isn't actually doing much right now. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much making, off. Making a few rocket parts and a few uh, modules. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, concrete, um, probably not the best idea in, in this scale of things. If you have pollution on, uh, it will impact performance. Looks like he is making rockets. Uh, fairly slowly. A very nice train color here. We've uh, written this down to steal it. <laughs> this is a really, really nice train color. This is uh, his engineering train, it looks like. Yep, just trying to see if I can get a rocket to launch. Oh, perfect. There we go. Yeah, I love this, this gold color. Very mm -hmm. nice. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, speed beaconed his oil wells, which is good thing to do once they get low like this and it, he has no oil problems on this map you can see it's pretty ridiculous the oil patch five. size here five in the hole five in the hole let's go yeah the oil, oil one in the north is just ludicrous mm -hmm. it's just like all the richness settings all the uh, frequency settings have been turned up yeah oh look Ooh, wow okay good. so he's already launched 32 yeah very nice um okay so next thing i guess is the robo ports and type stuff do you want to kind of go over that and moving around in the base yeah so i can tell straight away that it appears to be modeled on our spacex plus map because we did the double robo port system although he's done he's one up to us and made it nice with substations in the corners and it all fits together very nice ours didn't so yeah quite jealous of that um Secondly, this base is one of the hardest I've ever found to walk around. I, I'm struggling to get through places, especially over by where we were, by the silo and the make everything's area. You just can't get through. And I think he's just run out of space. If you check the map, you can see that we are surrounded on three sides by solar, one side by water. Mm -hmm. So it feels like he's just cramped himself in. And there's plenty of map out there that the solar could occupy. So, always try and leave yourself plenty of space for the actual base, and before you start building the solar, otherwise you end up cramped in, and then you really become stuck. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. he does have a make everything here, which is pretty nice, although it does not seem to include any power armor or power armor parts, which... I'm a bit surprised, but I guess you mentioned, Will, as it's just single player, he probably doesn't really go through them that much if at all yeah he probably made one for himself in a little ad hoc factory in early game which is long since gone and hasn't needed to make another one ever again so yeah I mean not everyone gets run over by trains four times an hour <laughs> yeah that's uh that's my <laughs> special ability um it looks like is this a Zuri Does, this is Zuri I can never exactly remember Zuri's design, I think. Yes, this it is. is. Yes, it is. 
Yeah, and it looks like he's taken Roboports out of a lot of these, which is fine. I mean, they're already built. You don't really need them yeah. at that point here. If you do remove them, though, you could put four more accumulators in the corners. Mm-hmm. Um... Also, I think way overkill on the Roboports. As you said, this is kind of the type of thing we did with SpaceX, but um, we realized yeah, sure. that that was not the best way to actually do it. Yeah. Hey, look, a little safe bossy. No, oh, jeez. I didn't think that was going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been perfect. We will get you killed in one of these videos. It's going to happen. Oh, I'm sure it will. Um, so this, this is actually a good place to mention the train stacker system here, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah, fantastic coloring system. I really like it. Uh, he's got some sort of pre-stack on. I don't quite understand what it's doing, but the trains are held at this first set just before the lights, held by a red wire. And then once that lets them through, then they're allowed into the normal chain signal system, which will let them into the station. So I don't quite understand what the first one is doing. I think it is just rotating them. So that every train gets used and they don't sit there. I guess that could be to make sure the outpost it doesn't ever favor one outpost. Mm hmm. That would because I can't really see any combinator stuff reading off like the network or anything. They just they're just linked to each other. Yeah, and it has something he's using like wooden box equals wooden box. I'm not entirely sure, like you said, what exactly is going on. But uh, I do like. The light colors and also something uh, smart that he's done, which I would we would definitely advise, is he's, for a stacker like this, he's separated his iron and copper and oil and otherwise things into separate tracks. Uh, in our Earth map, we did a stacker similar to this, except we made the mistake of not separating them, so you would have, like, say, all copper trains back up because our network was full of copper and the iron trains would pull in behind them and never be able to get through when we needed iron because the copper trains were just sitting there because we already had copper. Um, so separating them into separate tracks like this is a really good way to do it. Yeah, I was just coming over to the online and see if there's anything smart going on here and I don't see anything. No, it it's looks It's a little like... bit on the call, but that just seems to be... Um, it, what I'm, okay, so, yeah, I mean, this is unloading fairly unevenly. You can see that all these chests are empty, whereas this one, they're all full, so it can't even unload. Um, but. Yeah, that, that can become a problem in mass, um, when you're making huge quantities, because you need that train to empty to let the next one in. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, looking... I don't know if you've looked at these signals. It seems like it's signaled pretty well. What do you think here just for this pass-through? Yeah, so, yeah, so it lets the trains escape and lets the next one in. That's, that's pretty good. It would have issues if it really had to run at a high speed because you can only have one in, one out from any one of these stations at a time. Mm -hmm. But you can have multiple come in together. That's fine. Just only one can leave at a time. Yeah. What if to get a higher throughput? What you could do is split it in half and have the bottom half escape downwards, but you can't because they've run out of space and escape this way. Mm -hmm. For half of them, that would allow two out at the same time. Also, you could have one out at the bottom while one comes in at the top. Right. But yeah, that that's fine for. I don't know whether that's enough or though to one train unloading. I mean, it unloads pretty fast, but like you said, it's uneven. I mean, this train's still not left yet. Well, he can't because one's already leaving. I mean, with the amount of smelters he's got here, I wonder if that can supply enough ore. I kind of doubt it. Um, like we mentioned, the base isn't really doing much right now, so yeah. it's kind of hard to tell. But um, I guess we can cover the smelters here. He's actually done an interesting uh, system in terms of his limitations with the output you'll notice these inserters are using a circuit condition rather than a logistics network condition um, to have copper less than C and for iron it's iron plate less than I and for steel it's steel plate less than S. Essentially what he's done is mimicked the 
uh, logistic type conditions, but with a circuit network via a combinator that he can just change one combinator and it changes all the inserters. Uh, which is pretty nice, I think. It's it's a really cool system. Yeah, it's um, it was it led the way for a while. I think our latest system is to move away from this though, because the problem with any insert that's connected to a uh, circuit condition like this never goes to sleep. So all these inserts are always awake, mm -hmm. which can cause UPS issues on large maps, which this is heading towards. Yeah, uh, our latest way is just to go back to old school and just hard limit the box. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of boxes, I think you mentioned the request amounts. Maybe a tad high. Yeah, a tad. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for overkill, but 2,000 all per box. Yeah, I would say he could probably cut this by 10, like cut it, do a tenth of this, 200 or maybe 500 uh, the far if you, on these really far ones because the farther away you get right the more you need to request yeah, but more in more, the yeah, yeah 2000 I think is just way way overkill for this yeah um, it's just artificially free. plus if you ever want to move this good luck <laughs> good luck yeah exactly um, the beacon design here is good though this is actually the 8-8 design um, again to yeah. clarify meaning each furnace is hit by eight beacons, and each beacon hits eight furnaces. Um, you can see number effect source is 10, which again means eight beacons plus the two modules they count as a source, so 10. Um, so very well done there. Yep. Uh, should we cover oil? Sure. Uh, we've got one storage tank. It's the first thing I'll check is storage tanks. We've got about one of each liquid, which is totally fine because he's reading off the circuit condition to just push, I'm guessing, the heavy, uh, sorry, the light oil around, whether it gets solid fueled or cracked. Mm -hmm. Likewise, heavy, either cracked or lube, which is fine. Reading how much crude oil he's got, I guess that could be useful to know if there's a shortage. So, yeah, one tank of each is fine. I'm going to assume that this is the right ratio for refineries to light. Uh, cracking, it looks like it is. Yeah, I think so. The mod, the ratios change when you put in modules and stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, but it seems yeah. pretty good. Because there's also, no just huge backups. It's very clever. The way the refineries kick out their inputs, yeah, the petroleum comes onto this petroleum pipe, which is the cracking's output, because the crackers are turned around. Traditionally, you'd have them facing south. Oh, yeah. So he saves pipe and space. That's very clever. I like that. I like that too. That's really, really quite good. Um, this, uh, one thing yeah. I do oh, notice. I've just spotted something as well, but you go first. I was going to say, um, just a ratio thing. This seems, uh, this is way off unless the modules actually change it this much. There, He has five sulfur producers to one sulfuric acid. Um, normally it would be five to two, and I don't think the productivity modules change it that much mm -hmm. in fact it would actually change it the other way yeah um, i've seen sulfurs going into the network though um and i think i saw him to make everything he's making explosives so i think he might have just been experimenting with the weapons that we know are no good but he might have wanted to play around with them mm -hmm. that's a good point um yeah i just noticed here there's a petroleum blob of pipe oh so I, I can fix it by just removing those two, but you don't want uh, to give pipes multiple paths. I think even straight away, that's flowing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see the pipe just here above me, you can see it moving through the pipe. Yeah. Yeah, Whereas that was before, good If I put that back, I'm... Oh, no, it's because... Yeah. I can show it. But... Uh, it seems to be okay about it, but the danger is that the petroleum will not go down the underground pipe, which is where it's meant to go. It could just get stuck going round and round and round this little blob. Yeah, exactly. And it just looks cleaner like this, too. Yeah. Um, so, a little yeah, fix it... there. And... Oh, we, sh we should show the combinator um, where he does yep. change his amounts. It's yep. quite clever. And he actually has, like, a little... Uh, key. Key for it. Yeah, so the, each material has a letter assigned to it. All of them quite intuitive once you see it, except A for batteries. 
but then it's the second letter, so that's fine. And then you just change this combinator here, I'll let you open it. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you just see yeah. um, iron 5k, copper 5k, steel 5k, pretty much everything 5k, but essentially this is um, based on the circuit conditions we saw on the inserters. This is pretty much exactly what the logistics network would do, except that you can change them all at once just by changing a number in the combinator. But as Will said, uh, the problem with that is it does keep the inserters on all the time. Yeah, which is fine to begin with, but when you get the bigger you get, the bigger that problem becomes. Mm -hmm. And it's a slippery slope once you break that UPS. I'm just going to see how close we are to. I'd imagine fairly close. I'd be surprised if we have a lot of wiggle room. Actually, no, we're nowhere near. We're at six, and we're allowed to be at six, to get to sixteen on game update. Oh, of course, again, though the base is like thing. pretty much off. Yeah. I mean, it's really not doing anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, we're we're making uh. We're making like five k iron and copper a minute, which is probably I would imagine based on this, maybe a fifth or less of what this can actually do. I would imagine this can probably, by looking at it, do maybe 25k a minute, 30 maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the base is pretty much off at this point, so that's part of it. Yeah. And I think the problem, the reason it's off is the, the rocket section, which I guess is what this base is meant to do. I'm not, he's finished the research and there's no labs. Mm -hmm. So it's meant to just launch rockets. The rocket bits are the bottleneck. Like this is not a big enough low density rocket fuel rocket control unit part at all it needs to be much more more fast to double it yeah pretty much and he has room he can build it all up in here yeah um, yeah and the uh the, the solid fuel is not enough there's only two assemblers making it and i think you would probably spot the ratio thing because he's making speed modules direct the rocket control units are actually half the ratio of the others so you've got four low density and only two rocket control. I'm pretty sure they're the same. Oh, yeah. They take the same time as the others. You need the same amount. Um, yeah. So that is a bit off. Yeah, you'd need more fast to double this bit. Um, and actually also, too, um, just another small ratio thing is you can actually do two, low, uh, two rocket control units from one speed module because the rocket control unit takes 30 seconds, requires one speed module, and the speed modules take 15 seconds to make, right? So one of these yeah. can make two modules in the time it takes to make one rocket control, so one to two. Um, speaking of modules, he is using, um, I think someone mentioned in your chat, because we are doing this on Will's stream today, that uh, this is a nearly Dutch build, I think. Um, it's good module builds, right ratios. Yeah, that's what we use, I think. Yeah, are very, very similar. Well done. Um, he has speeded them, which <laughs> is... Um, builds like this, when you speed them, they are so circuit hungry, it's pretty crazy. So I'm trying to see. I think he can kind of supply it. Um, it looks like there are a few bottlenecks, but... Yeah, I think it's for supply, if anything. Yeah, red circuits. Mm-hmm. Which is plastic. Probably. Um, yeah. And it. Uh, what was it I was going to say? Uh, red. So he's got the right ratio here, I think. Actually, no, you're the ratio. No, it's. Top um, wire to red circuits, but when it's productivity, doesn't it change? It changes. He has 1 to 9, which may be what it is. I don't remember off the top of my head what the moduled ratio is. Um, this copper wire is not as fast as the red circuits as well, but I guess it's working okay, so. Yeah, which. It is kind of weird, though, that he's gone from the most optimal beacon thing with the smelting to a non-optimal beacon design for this i'm guessing just because he wanted like this type of machine layout but you yeah, could it, change it this a cool. bit um circuits seem good this is actually interesting this is like one and a half to one which works um or no, this is actually still 3 to 2, looking at it. Oh, I thought it was 1 to 1, because it, that, it, oh, yeah, it comes off this side as well. Yeah, see, so there's two 
the three yeah. so this um yeah when you put modules in it pretty much becomes a one-to-one -one. it's not exact um yeah it's but 11 to 10 isn't it or something silly like that i think it was like 14 to 15 15 to 14 okay, that's the one yeah yeah, so it's something silly like that. So this is still a 3 to 2, which is a bit overkill on the copper wire. Mm -hmm. um, but And more, more inserters than that needed as well to achieve it. Yeah, that as well. And uh, I'm trying to think. I think that about nice, covers uh, it. Yeah. Uh, he's got a couple of oil outposts out and about, but they appear to be all beacon like this. He's just scrammed as many beacons around the pump jacks as possible. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty good. You know, get lots of oil out of that. Yeah. And... He's even using because he's using pumps to uh, push the oil out and down the pipe. Mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, looks like a left-hand drive rail system signaling seems pretty good. Yep. Double-headed trains I like. Uh, a safe crossing. I don't know how safe. I survived so. No. Uh -huh. Jump. <laughs> uh, that was close. Uh, oh, this, yeah. something I just logic noticed. Bridge. What? Oh, you were first. No, it's like you were first. Then you would do logic bridge. Oh, um, yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know what this is, but it seems like something you don't want. I mean, uh, it's just trying to push as, all the oil down, but it works, I believe, but the better way of doing it is just to barrel it up and logic it across. I mean, the, the network is right there. Mm -hmm. Just use this, if we go down to this Logi bridge, what this is, is it separates the home Logi network from the outer one, so the solar panels and defense one mm -hmm. that's around the base is separated, and then you just use what we call a Logi bridge. Yeah. So you just request it on one, use an insert to take it across the gap. You'll see there's a gap of one green tile between the two orange, and then passive provider on the other, and it all back and forward, and you can pass stuff from one to the other. Um, so he's using it to pass out his solar panels and accumulators and substation stuff out, and then I guess like wood goop and stuff back, mm -hmm. which is great. But he could just do the same thing with full barrels out into this one, and then empty barrels come back the other way, and that will work even better than trying to pipe it. It's also more UPS friendly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and he is using the he is using circuit conditions to limit these, which I think is pretty good. And one thing I noticed, which is pretty clever, uh, is he's actually for the solar panel and accumulator uh, limit amounts. He's actually uh, set the amounts to be the correct uh, 0.84 ratio. Uh, 1.9k solar panels to 1.6k accumulators is a 0.84 ratio, which I think is pretty clever. I mean, on on, on this bulk size it doesn't necessarily make that huge of a difference in terms of limiting the boxes to that amount but it is pretty clever to do yeah just attention to detail uh just looking at the signal while he was doing that of this uh, standard t-junction which is this yeah it's perfectly signaled one f as a standalone t-junction it's perfectly signaled one thing that we've been doing lately is to remove this signal here because it's got the chain signals before these normal ones are connected to this one. Mm -hmm. But if a train was not, if this line was uh, backed up, a train could still be sat here, which would then still block the T-junction. So it's probably good practice to remove, the, have a gap from the last normal before the next one to allow a train to park in it. Yeah. So you do the same here as well. But as a standalone T junction, it is perfectly signaled. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, yep. You know, more. So, uh... Yeah, more of a bigger base than we've done previously. Um, bot based and overall good. The few little things we pointed out uh, could improve, but overall pretty yep. interesting and well done. Yep. Very good. Alrighty, well, that'll do it for this one, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye.